All right, so what I have for you is a quick tutorial on how to place Fibonacci retracements and extensions. So starting off, I have Alibaba, ticker Baba, on a four-hour chart. A four-hour chart is usually what I like to start off with uh, when drawing Fibonacci retracements. Reason behind that is, is where it shows the most pre-market and after-hours data while still being on a bigger time frame. Uh, if we're on the daily, we have all these nasty gaps and we don't get the exact high or exact low because there is no pre-market and after-hours data. And that's oftentimes where you see those tops and bottoms. So in this situation, we are waiting to go long somewhere around here. Uh, you know, if we go back, we're like, when when do we, you know, when do we buy calls? So we, we know right away that there's buyers that are going to step in somewhere around here. So just based on Fibonacci retracements, as that's our focus for this video, not supply and demand, uh, we want to wait till we establish a bottom, in which case it was here. We mark our bottom and we go up to a top. Now this is, this is all preference right here. You can mark your top here or you can mark your top where the real selling begins. So next we'll look at if we were to place our top right here and there's no right or wrong answer it's about what makes sense when you place your your levels on your charts so after we get our bottom in we want to see where are we going to bounce to until we reject in some cases we might bounce up to this level and reject sometimes we might go up to here and reject other times we're just strong and one level i really look out for is the 61.8 that's a very strong algo number um that's oftentimes a good target level it's stronger than most fib fib extensions retracements so if we were to place our top here where the real selling began we could see that our 618 here 61.8 61.8 retracement is right there and if we're on the daily that's also where the gap begins uh, you can't really see it because most of it took place after hours pre-market there so that's kind of what I'm shooting for with Baba in our current situation. I know this is more of a tutorial video, not a technical analysis where we're going to place a trade or take profit. But that, that's kind of what I look for. You know, in this situation, I would use this as a top. It, it kind of it has more confluence to it. We see the 61.8 where a gap fill is. So this is, this is kind of what I look for. I'll move into another example and another ticker here. So... This situation is determining, waiting for a bottom, buyers to step in, and then placing our FIB. We want to make sure that is a sure bottom. So we'll go into CGC, another trade from this week. So four hour, we see this bullish pennant here, and it really coincides with our FIB levels as this was support as we're squeezing into the end of our pattern here. Uh, we'll go into a two hour, give it a closer view. So here, it was, it was pretty quick. Our high and low were pretty much day to day. So in this example, we're using fibs to really measure a extension mark. So we want to see what might the price go to once it breaks this high. And that's when these come in handy. 127 and the 161 is really the, the main focal points for target profits. Uh, I kind of ignore this. It's not as strong. It's not a strong algo number. So in this case, I'd be looking to take some profits here, but it all depends on how strong price is reacting to that level. So here we, we, we printed a, a clean candle over the 100% FIB, and it looks like we are on track to go here, but it doesn't always work out like that. Sometimes news or just whatever buyers step out and we reject, but this we know can be a strong support. So as long as that holds, it's still bullish. We're still holding above a previous high and we're still trying to establish higher highs. So another thing I want to point out is this bullish pennant we have. We have a higher higher high, lower low, lower high, higher low. So what this is doing is getting it's getting tight, it's squeezing and it's consolidating into a very tight um, tight action right into the end of our pennant. And what I really like to pair this with is the TTM squeeze. So yeah, it actually it actually works out really nice in this example. 
we have a TTM squeeze um, popping off right here. That means price is getting really tight. There's about to be a big move. And here we have it pop off. So out of the pattern, TTM squeeze fires to the upside. It's green. TTM can be downside. They could have gone down to purple, but you know, bullish pennant is a bullish indicator. So this is kind of a confluent indicator, meaning more than one indications that price is going to react a certain way. So based off the fib, broke out of the pattern and we have a TTM squeeze. So that all those kind of aligned and that's why this chart stood out to me. And the next one I'll go into is, let's go into Apple. So what we wanna look for here so this is a good example, but it's a bit different from CGC. We want to look for a recent high and a recent low. So once we've established that, let's go ahead and start at our high and go down to our low. Okay, so this one works out pretty well. What we want to see here is when are when are we when are buyers going to step in and here it is the magic fib number that we look for the strong algo number 618 and buyers stepped in right away here and they stepped in strong brought the price right on up so again if you if you know what you're looking for sometimes you can catch these hidden gems and let's go to a four hour Yeah, so if, if you're on a four hour, you might just catch a little wick like that. But let's see if we were to mark this our top, what would it look like? So pretty much we, we still reclaim the 61.8. It's There's really price lingered around here. It, it could fall like this, but, it, you know, we reclaim this territory and we're now bidding above, which is strong. Nothing is ever going to be exact. We're not just going to never break below this to the penny. So... It's a good reference tool and it's, it's really good to base other indications with it. Some people like MACD, RSI, EMAs, all that good stuff. Whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you. There's so many different strategies to work with. So I hope that gives you a good reference point on how I gauge my fibs off of, how I draw extensions. And if you have any questions, of course, just ask. Happy to help.